Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we are in the creepiest of the basements uh, where all the batteries and the solar charge controller and oh thank you very much <laughs> and the inverter is located and um, yeah I thought that I would um, I would do a video about this today I um, I want to have the lithium ion batteries the ones that I've made um, connected here soon I'm hoping to put them up here and have more battery capacity there um, but I need another charge controller the one that is missing right there I need that but it has been so long since we have been down here so I want to kind of go over what is going on in here bit of a mess but um, yeah bear with me so to start at the start this blue pipe over up here that goes all the way out to my solar panels there's a breaker box out there and then these uh, rather big wires comes in here and they go into the charge controller right there and if we check the charge controller we can see that that it's noisy we have 96 volts coming in 3, 4, 4 amps something uh, that's 440 watts it's not that great a day right now it has made 1564 kilowatt hours nice battery voltage is at 50.4 volts um, and we're charging the batteries with 8 amps 9 amps 400 and something watts so and there's a load so that's the battery charge controller uh, right now it has all of the solar panels connected to it I have 12 up there um, so they go in there then it goes down here there's a breaker 100 amp breaker and then it goes down to this inverter down here and um, yeah it's a 48 volts uh, watt inverter it has been doing okay it's been doing a good job uh, from the inverter it goes up to this uh, switch box well all the batteries this one is actually the breaker uh, from the the batter from the solar panels themselves it <laughs> goes down here gets into the breaker and then it goes up to the solar charge controller so i can turn off all of the solar incoming power from there and then each of these are out to each of the battery banks there are six battery banks uh, we can see over here one battery bank two three oh i've actually put labels on them so this is one two three and then over here it's four five six so that is all great um these are really old battery they look really good here they they are I, i'm kind of if they were all brand new and they had all of the capacity that they were once delivered with I should have 24 kilowatt hours of battery power here I do not have that I think I might have about 8 kilowatt hours and that is just because uh, you can't get all of the power out of, of all lead acid batteries and they're old and worn so they are closing up on 15 years I guess 12 15 years I forget how old they are maybe someday we'll see that but I have actually been powering some of my stuff from this setup right now I'm only drawing about 70 watts it's because uh, the days right now are on and off if it's solar or if it's clouded there's not always a lot of power so right now I'm just um, I'm running my computer in the living room off of solar have done that all summer and then when the batteries are fully charged I go down and I swap around um, this is my water heater and down here it has a it has a 3 kilowatt heating element and that goes up to this connector up here which is uh, that's a grid fit it gets the power from the from the normal grid it's a 400 volt uh, system so when I'm doing that it's it can use 3 kilowatts but I've made my own little um, thing here so 
So I can replace that, uh, take the connection out and put it over in this one. I might not see a lot. So a connection here and that goes over to the solar. It goes on that one. And when I do that, it's not gonna get three kilowatts. It gets about four to 500 watts of heating. So when I'm heating the water with solar power, I'm heating it with four to 500 watts. And it can do that all summer. It has been doing that when there was a lot of sun, but now I am, I, I shifted forth and back. And uh, as I get closer to winter, I'm gonna be relying more and more on grid power because I just don't get enough sun. It takes a couple of days for the batteries to charge up again. If there's a lot of sun and if there's not a lot of sun, well, it takes longer. Plus I am still using power. So yeah, let's um, let's get a move on with the work. That was kind of an overview of how this is set up right now. So I built all of these lithium ion batteries and each of these should be good for about a um, kilowatt hour uh, ish. So there is four kilowatt hours of battery power or battery storage right there. And there is a, the, the, the other charge controller that we're gonna be putting in there. That is right here, so let's bring that in. And I'm heating my house right now with the wood stove, so that is all good. It's not very cool right now, but it's 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 getting there. So um, I have a charge controller, it's just like the other one, and I'm gonna place it next to it because um, I can't, I don't think I can have the same charge controller charge both the, the lead acid batteries and the lithium ion batteries. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put another charge controller up and I'm gonna divide and put some of the solar panels over on that charge controller. And I'm, I'm kind of planning on having the batteries over here. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna put that charge controller up next to the other one. So I got this charge controller because I had one just like it. Um, but that one was an older model, it, well it really wasn't, but yeah, Chinese, they they did something weird and uh, this one can speak with, well, there's like a device for it, a cloud box and it's not even in there, where have I put that, oh it's there, here, that's a cloud box, oh. This is, yeah, cloud box M1. So you connect that to the box, and then you get some, um, you get your readings out, and you can connect to it uh, through, through Wi-Fi. And uh, so, and this box can do that. The other box I had would not do that. And this one also had a better maximum um, PV max volume, which is the power from the solar panels. The other one that didn't work with the cloud thingy was only 130 volts. This one is 150 volts. And I'm actually battling with myself if I should reconfigure my solar panels. Because right now I have, I have four strings of three panels. And uh, now that it can do 150 volts, I believe I could do three strings of four panels and that would give me a better result. There are losses in the wires when you uh, transfer DC power and the higher the voltage is and the lower the current is and the current is the one that is affected by wire thicknesses and the less amperage I need to transfer in those cables, the better it is. Plus the more panels I can put in, in serial the longer they will actually be able to produce power for the charge controller because in the morning it takes a bit before the charge controller will kick in because the panels will not receive any good voltage for a long time and with one more panel in in series well it will take a little bit less time so yeah let's mount this it's we have done this before it's not going to be a big deal i have put some screws up I need to drill a hole, uh, otherwise it's gonna be flapping in the wind. So, yeah, it looks like this. They are not very expensive. Uh, I believe this one is uh, about a hundred pounds. I will leave a link in the description. Oh, 
Um, I put a sensor on my lights down here so that the lights will turn on and off automatically. I didn't really think about uh, filming when I did that. Okay, I am mounting it. Oh, there is no lights down here. That's so stupid. No, I have. I am not giving up on my Ryobi tools. I just couldn't be bothered to go up on the second floor to pick it up. I think it's about there. And um, I'll drill a hole down here and make sure that it can't do that. It's actually a pretty good solar day today, so uh, uh, we are charging really nicely. The batteries are now at 51.4 volts and I have drilled the hole down here so I'm gonna see if I can if I can get a screw in there. That looks good. There. Perfect. So now it's in place. Cool. Okay, we're doing really well here. I've been doing other stuff, but um, the battery voltage is at 55.8 volts, that's... So they're about max. Um, I've taken off a shelf here uh, because I'm gonna... Well, everybody is always telling me that I'm gonna... I'm gonna burn down my house and it's gonna be right away. Um, but I'm actually gonna... The, the lithium ion batteries, I'm gonna make a fireproof shelf for them that they can sit on. So let's go do that. We have moved upstairs to the second second floor and I took one of the shelves out as you could see down there and with a marker I've marked around it I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller because it's it's really difficult to get in there so I used um, this is some fiber drywall uh, this is actually for flooring in, in bathrooms I had some leftovers over here I'm, I'm, I'm having a bathroom made up here but there were some leftovers. This is used for the floor and it goes on top of the floor heating. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's some really good quality stuff and it does not burn. This is some really hard stuff. Look at that. Fiber drywall and you can cut a piece like that. That's incredible. Okay, it's very dusty. a lot of sewing. smaller. I'll go check if it will fit. Oh. But it's very heavy. Okay. It's not often that I'm that lucky. It fit very well at, at the first try. Very well indeed. Well, uh, the shelf might not be totally straight. But awesome. This is um, definitely fireproof going down. Um, fireproof going up, not so much. Uh, to the side, that's a wall. That does not burn, that does not burn. The roof, 
which is a bit up, well, that will eventually burn. But you do actually need a bit to set that on fire when you just put some fire up in the middle of it. But this is an improvement and I do not expect them to start catching a fire by themselves. Now I just picked up one of the batteries in there. This doesn't look great. Um, yeah, it's, it sticks out by, that's at least 10 centimeters right there. And that was actually what I was hoping for, but well, that's not great. I'm gonna try and, f I'll try something else. Okay, I guess it's gonna be like this. Um, I need to figure out how to connect all these. There's four very nice big connection terminals there. And um, I've built this so that each battery should not supply a lot of current. Um, these BMSs are only like 15 amps. So that's not a lot. Um, so 48 volts, 15 amps, that's 750 watts per battery. And I'm not planning on going there. I'm actually hoping for about 10 amps forth and back of, uh, of the batteries and that uh, well that adds up. This is a 40 amp charge controller and 2500 watts is also just about 40 amps. Oh now it's a very noisy. That one is making a noise. It must be sunshine outside. And that one is making a noise. So yeah I need a need to design some kind of a breaker box for this would also like to be able to switch on and off the independent batteries before detaching them so yeah there is a little bit of space left over here at the end of the batteries I was just um, on eBay and there's a commercial lithium phosphate battery something available and I am thinking about maybe getting one of those those are 2.6 kilowatt hours of battery capacity and I could have one of those sitting there and then four cells. That would be awesome. So I am running some of my stuff off of solar and I am um, getting on with improving it and I am planning on extending that. I have that heat pump sitting outside that is also going to be running off of solar. That's the plan anyway. Lovely day like this where it's cold outside but the sun is shining would be an awesome time for that heat pump to supply some heat to the house. Um, because right now I'm burning wood and that wood I could save for another day. So um, yeah, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.